Yo, what's up, JT Squad? Welcome back to our poo 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 channel. No poo poo. Ah ah. Poo poo. Ah. YouTube channel. Yes, today we are reacting to the top ten most racist moments in football. I fucking hate racist man. I'm sorry. So let's go. If there's one thing I hate the most, it's gonna be racism. Like you can be anything you want in this world, but just don't be racist. Don't be racist. Yep, yep, yep. So please don't forget to smash the subscribe button, like the video, share the video, comment something nice, follow us on Instagram, press the join button, yep. and let's get right into the video. I know for sure Barotel is gonna be here. Very no, sure. No. Top 10 most racist moments in football. Let's go. Number 10, Mario Balotelli. Balotelli gave Brescia the lead after 18 minutes of the match against Lotelli gave Brescia the lead after 18 minutes of the match against Lazio in January and shortly afterwards complained to the referee about the abuse. It's already the second time, Balotelli told referee Gianluca Manganiello after half an hour, with the latter replying, now I'll take care of it. The referee briefly interrupted the match, and Lazio coach Simone Inzaghi gestured in front of the visiting fans to stop the chanting. Lazio fans that were today at the stadium Shame on you. Hashtag say no to racism. Balotelli posted on his Instagram after the game. Italian international Balotelli previously faced racist chanting during his team's 2-1 defeat against Verona in November. In the 55th minute of the match, Mario oh. Balotelli decided he had heard enough. That's true though. That's true. It's not even about... It's never about like anger how issues. anger issues. Like it's just. I think he's one of the most targeted for like for racism, racism because yeah. they know it football. gets to him easily. I think. Yeah, I guess. I don't know why. You, why do you have to turn to racist stuff? Taunted by a chorus of monkey I chants from fans of the opposing so Verona team, the 29-year-old, who was one of Italy's best-known you know sportsmen. You know, what, you know one. You know one thing I hate about. Mm -hmm. When you see that you're angry, when the uh, the opponent see that you're angry and they start and telling you, the, the, continue down. playing, continue playing, calm mm -hmm. down. Calm what the, what, the, what the hell like, is that? Like, I'm being I mean, racially abused and you're telling me to continue. How, no, how, how feel, does that make any I sense? I feel is that, what I feel is that, like, they don't know no, what, what feel it feels is, like. When someone understand, because, it. like, they feel it's something you can just overlook. Like, yeah. It's just yeah. them chanting, you can overlook it, right? Opted to hoof the ball into the stands forcing the referee to halt the game number nine oh, danny I alves this, i love this guy like he oh. doesn't really care honestly <laughs> he doesn't really care about one of the most popular clips of the last few years involves barcelona's ex right back danny alves the marauding brazilian defender was playing against spanish opposition villarreal but was subjected to a fan throwing a banana at him after it hit the turf Alves picked up the banana and took a bite before taking a corner. Villarreal was later fined around $15,000 for the incident by the Spanish Football Federation. This sparked a global social media drive against racism with a number of different players getting... Oh, like, what's, what's at the back of your mind doing this to a funny person? Some are so in insensitive, man. What the... ...involved, depicting eating a banana it was later satirized by the likes of Sergio Aguero and Luis Suarez. Number eight, John Terry. What? What? How can they reach out? It's wide. During a Chelsea versus Queens Park Rangers game, video footage began swarming around the internet. The clip showed Terry saying an alleged racist slur to Anton Ferdinand, the brother of former Manchester United defender Rio, who is black. This incident gained plenty of momentum as papers from around the world picked up on it. In an embittered Crown Court as papers from around the world picked up on it. In an embittered Crown Court case which lasted four days, former England skipper Terry was found innocent of racial abuse. What? How can you be found innocent of racial abuse? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make actually sense. That makes, no sense. that makes no sense. Wow, okay. Oh, I watched this much. White privilege. Number seven, Luis Suarez. 
In a match between Liverpool and Manchester United in 2011, Luis Suarez was accused of abusing Patrice Evra using racial slurs. Suarez had maintained that though he had used the word Negro, it held a different meaning in Spanish and was used in that very context. As a result, like, like it's not about what it means to you. It's what exactly. how what the what person that is hearing it feels. <laughs> like because Negro means something else in your language doesn't mean you say it to a black person. Black person. We are supposed to be sensitive yeah. to the word Negro. And when you know like it means that something word. else, right? It's yeah, like something outside. Black. And you still say it's it. Still say it's it. not right. Result of Ivra's claims, the Uruguayan was deemed to be guilty. The racial abuse charge carried a hefty fine in the region of ninety thousand dollars, while Suarez was banned from playing for eight matches. However, this did not help <laughs> matters, and in a later game at Old Trafford, it came to a head. It was the first time that Suarez and Ivra had crossed paths since this infamous incident. So wait. Luis Suarez was found guilty, right? Mm -hmm. So why was John Terry innocent? Does he call Luis Suarez is like Brit Latino? Latino, so. or and like, John Terry is British. I I don't know, man. But like to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of injustice in football. I swear, um, like the last even, match against Masha. Yeah, the last. Mm -hmm. match. I can never forget. I can't get yeah. that out of my head. Yeah. Um. As Suarez went down the line of players, he refused to shake the Frenchman's hand. This was to go down in history books as yet another controversial moment of the bitter rivalry between both Manchester United and Liverpool. Challenge. Number six, but guess with it. But United guess. and Liverpool. Fenerbahce. Number six, Spanish national team. The end of 2004 moment for the Spanish national side. They had been involved in not one, but two racial situations involving not only the team, but also the manager at the time. In the first instance, England was supposed to play a harmless friendly that was to take place in Madrid. But later, what resulted was the vile abuse of several English black players, including Ashley Cole, as well as Sean Wright Phillips. Monkey chants were hurled at both individuals. Later that year... Are Spanish really that racist? I don't know, man. I think racism is actually almost everywhere. Almost everywhere. It's everywhere, I guess. Italian fans are so racist. That that one, I'm actually I'm really English, sure. English fans, too. English fans too. Spain coach Luis Aragonés landed himself in hot water. This was largely in thanks to geeing up his player Jose Antonio Reyes as they were about to face France. Unfortunately, Aragonés referred to Gallic star Thierry Henry as a black. Number five, Real Zaragoza. While playing for the Catalan giants of FC Barcelona, Samuel Itu had to undergo racial abuse. This took place in February 2005 when Barcelona faced Real Zaragoza away from the Camp Nou. What unfolded was pretty awful as the Cameroon international had to hear a host of monkey noises every time he touched the ball. Meanwhile, another Zaragoza fan even threw peanuts. All of this was simply because he was black. But 12 months later, he nearly walked off in protest. The exact same chanting occurred, but Itu was not prepared to take any more abuse. When Itu almost walked off the pitch, he could be seen I, saying in Spanish... Honestly, I don't understand. Like, why would you stop him? Why would you stop him? Just... You should walk out with him, but like you can. It's not like you can't hear it. I exactly, know, I know you it's can, so much fun at that time playing the game and stuff. But I mean, like this is this is immense. Like I don't know. No mass or no more over and over again. Number four, Paulo De Canio, a maverick figure at times. Paulo De Canio has in time pushed over a referee, not to mention started fights with his own players. This particular incident happened during his time in Serie A, which later earned him a ban for one game. 
the fascist salute made by De Canio took place on separate occasions against Livorno and Juventus. What is the name of this guy? German... This guy? Hitler. Hitler. The most controversial episode was when he made the same salute at the end of a game when his former club Lazio beat their arch enemies Roma by three goals to one. Number three, Malky McKay. McKay was a common fixture in news headlines when his anti-Semitic, fatphobic and sexist sentiments came to light. The former Premiership manager was under investigation on account of a series of texts between himself and Ian Moody. He was known to use phrases such as fat Jew and chinks, and in another text with a colleague, he said, Go on, fat Phil. Nothing like a Jew that sees money slipping through his fingers. Number two, Ron Atkinson. Commentators should always know when the microphone is on them. Apparently, some are exempt from this rule, as in the case of Ron Atkinson. In April 2004, the ex-Aston Villa and Manchester United manager was commentating on a match between Chelsea and Monaco. Unfortunately, to his surprise, Atkinson's comments on French defender Marcel Desailly were picked up. This was detrimental to Atkinson as he believed that his microphone was switched off and commented on the Frenchman's defending as what is known in some schools as a f lazy thick wow. He was later sacked from his role with the British broadcasting station ITV. Finally, number one, Kevin Prince Boateng. In early January 2013, things became ugly when AC Milan played a pre-season friendly with a lower league club, Pro Patria. AC Milan's player, Boateng, had faced open displays of racism before and always ignored it. 25 minutes into the match, Boateng couldn't take the monkey noises and name calling any longer and snapped. He took the ball, booted it in the direction of the abusers and stormed off the field. The moment became a show of solidarity as all the players walked off the field in support of Boateng. He later told the reporters... That, this is what should happen, not stopping him from, from leaving the pitch. I said to myself, in this kind of environment, in this situation, I don't want to play football anymore. Wow. Uh, wow. To be honest, this kind of things just make me feel so, what's it called? Emotional, sad, disappointed. Oh, fuck. I don't know. And I don't think racists should actually be allowed to live among, like, normal. Or, or I think it's just, I don't know, is it just illiteracy or no? It's not. Some people know yeah, it. They know, yeah. Some people know it, but like this, still. I'm a little bit sad because this is the reality of the world. These are the ones we know of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Many black players actually face this like every time, every game. Mr. Boakadashlar, yeah, that's it, guys. Top ten most racist, most rare moments in football, mm -hmm. and we hope you learned some things from this. Mm -hmm. And if you did, please like and subscribe. Please smash the subscribe button, like the video, share the video, comment something nice, follow us on Instagram, and, and so we'll see you next time, guys. Peace.